This is the best of the Dan Levator show with the Stugatz podcast. No Durant last night, <laughs> and the Warriors win by 30. Yep. JaVale McGee had more points than Damian Lillard and C.J. McCollum. <laughs> I really do believe that the Warriors would beat the Blazers even if Durant and Curry were both out which is a magnificent thing to think about. Well, they won by 30 without Durant. Now take Curry off the court. They won by 20. Well, but that's a home game. <laughs> I, but still, I, I just think it's fascinating how much better that team is than everyone else. So good that they could turn JaVale McGee into not merely a competent player, but last night an overwhelming one. JaVale McGee in 13 minutes last night great. scored every basket, every shot that he took, blocked shots, was altering everything. At the rim. In 13 minutes, JaVale McGee was plus 19. Yeah, in 13 minutes, he he scored more than C.J. McCollum and Damian Lillard did in the whole game. Yep. In 13 minutes. And then the big story of the night last night, Russell Westbrook, hissing radiator that he is, this is Russell Westbrook's react reaction to being told to look at his stat line. The stat line is in front of him. It's a 50-point Triple double. Here is Russell Westbrook's reaction to that. Russell, how would you grade uh, when you look at your line on the box score? How would you grade the line? I don't give a f about the line. You lost. There you go. Yep. And I want to ask you the question. We were talking about this during the local hour. A, was Russell Westbrook great last night? Yes or no? He was great through three quarters. Fourth quarter, he was, he was bad. I mean... Yeah, he was really bad. Yeah. And it was funny at the end of the third quarter seeing him taken out for one minute and Oklahoma <laughs> City losing the entire lead that it had built. It was 90 seconds. It was 92 seconds that he tried to sit down and get a drink. <laughs> and their entire lead evaporated because they're terrible without him. Did you guys see uh, Billy Donovan in game one? Because Cantor was getting yanked around so much on pick and rolls, Billy Donovan was caught mouthing to assistant coach Mo Cheeks. Can't play Cantor. Can't play Cantor. And then he was asked about it, and instead of denying it, what he said is, oh, I say a lot of things. You guys are taking one thing out of context. It was a part of a whole larger conversation. <laughs> what was the rest of the larger conversation? Cantor's a bum? <laughs> he doesn't play any defense? He's one of the worst defensive players I've ever seen? You caught one of my ten insults to eat his right. You caught you guys left out all the all the curses. You caught one he confirmed it though. Can't play Cantor. That should be his first name. Can't play. I mean, he's great offensively. He really is a skilled offensive player, but he, he just doesn't have any place in that series, and I'm not sure he's got a place in the new NBA. I'm not sure either. He's been their second-best player this year, Enos Cantor has. Mm -hmm. He has. It's weird. I, I can't believe we've arrived without Kevin Durant at a place where Russell Westbrook is again getting criticized because a lot of people are criticizing him for what he did in the fourth quarter, the fact that he took every shot, did not pass the ball. Who's he going to pass the ball to? And Russell Westbrook, I believe their record is phenomenal when he has triple doubles this year. So, I mean, I, I just can't believe Kevin Durant left him and he's still getting criticized for things he does in the fourth quarter. What is he supposed to do? Pass it to Roberson? Well, wait a minute. What are you doing with this nuance? You measure people by winning and losing. Right. That's what you do. You are the guy, if, you, if Paul George loses twice... He's not leading Miles Turner, Lance Stevenson, and C.J. Miles. He's not being a leader. He's blaming others if he loses. If he wins, he's being a good leader. You're the guy who does that. Who are you yelling at? I'm yelling at everyone who is criticizing Russell Westbrook. Dan, if you have a good team, then win. And Russell Westbrook doesn't have a very good team. The only reason they're good, the only reason they're the sixth seed in the playoffs is because of Russell Westbrook. That's, he's the only reason. Well, he's literally playing with nothing out there. Well, he's not literally playing with nothing. Those guys aren't very good. There is no... Literally, there's nothing... There is something out there. Agreed. But Oladipo is pretty close. <laughs> he's been bad in the series. Yes. Actually, would, it, would, would nothing's inefficiency be 
less bad than Oladipo's inefficiency? I want to ask the question, can you win a championship with Russell Westbrook as your best player? Yes or no? Who does the second who has to be Pippin? Who's the guy that has to be Pippin if you do believe that you can win a championship with Russell Westbrook as your best player because he is great, but he's also inefficient and it dilutes his greatness. It's the same kind of great that Derrick Rose was when he was winning right. the MVP. It's an inefficient great. Sure. I think so I think Westbrook is better than Paul George. So I think if Paul George was Westbrook's Pippen, that those two guys could win a championship. I do think that. I don't. No. I mean, they couldn't win a championship with Durant. I think that style of play is very difficult. Michael Jordan couldn't win with that style of play. Right. Until he got Pippen. And even Michael Jordan was vastly more efficient than Russell Westbrook. Vastly. Michael Jordan was shooting 54, 55, 56%. That's, LeBron wins the titles because... You mean before he got Pippen, he was shooting those percentages, right? No, he was always shooting those... That's, per- that's what I'm saying. Before he even got Scottie Pippen, he was efficient. Yeah, right? well, but he wasn't that efficient. Correct. But it took... He did not get to 55% efficient. I don't believe, if my history, if my memory serves me, I don't believe that he got into that range where he was shooting 54, 55, 56% until... Pippen got there. But I think that's a very underrated part of LeBron James's genius. What did he shoot this year quietly, Mike? That he's a wing player who shoots with the efficiencies of a low post player. He shoots with the efficiency of a guy who's dunking all the time because he takes smart shots. Who had a higher field goal percentage than LeBron James this year? He had close to a 55% field goal percentage. Who was higher? Drummond? Maybe I'll check it right now. Like who who in the league was higher than the efficiency? Because I think it's an undervalued part of it's one of the many reasons that I think that LeBron James is somehow underrated. That he could consistently not be what Westbrook is as a shooter, shooting forty percent. Because if you believe that the winning is done in the margins, if you believe in this sport and in sports in general, that there's a lot of winning to be found in the margins, that's not a small margin, right. the 14% difference in efficiency between LeBron James and Russell Westbrook. He was 10th. There were a bunch of big guys, including Hassan Whiteside, DeAndre Jordan was number one, yeah. Gobert, Capella, Dwight Howard, yeah, Gortat. You'll, McGee, like you'll yeah, find all just dunkers. Giants. All yeah. dunkers. All big guys and dunkers, right. Yeah, Tristan. Right. Enos Cantor, by the way, was 11th. All right, give me a guy. Yes, he's a very skilled offensive player. Yeah. Who are oh, – give me the next closest guy to LeBron. Durant. Okay. And that's why Durant was their best player and Westbrook wasn't for all those years. And even then they didn't win a title. Right. I think it's a good question. Mike, what do you think of that – what do you think is the answer to that question? Can you win a title with Russell Westbrook as your best player? Yeah. The Warriors sort of changed the math. Like if you put DeMarcus Cousins next to Russell Westbrook, I'd say Russell Westbrook's the best player on that team, but that team's still not beating the Golden State Warriors. So you need like Westbrook, Cousins, maybe a guy like Millsap, maybe a guy like Isaiah Thomas. Like you need right. more. You need but two yeah, guys yeah, you can absolutely come up with a team where he's the best player and you win an NBA title. You just need a really strong supporting cast of all stars. That's <laughs> Well, that's which, what Golden State did. I which, mean, that's by the why. way, which by the way, you may be asking yourself the same question: If Steph Curry isn't around, players like Draymond Green and Clay Thompson, like it, it's it's really hard to do this math. I just find it funny, and I've said this before, and everyone gets mad at me when I say it, like really mad that Russell Westbrook is not better than he's been the last two or three years. He's just more alone. Right. That's why you're getting these ridiculous stat lines that don't even make any sense. Been forced to do more. But I don't think you can win that way. Well, not by himself. Yes, Russell Westbrook putting up a 50-point triple-double, as exciting as it was last night, that's not the way to win a championship. Well, well here's what I'm saying, Stugat. I mean, he did have the highest per in the league this year. That's everybody's favorite stat, all these new wave stat geeks like... It was by a good amount, too. Actually, you know what? I, I probably should change the way that I'm, the vocabulary that I'm using on efficiency because I'm looking at field goal percentage and I'm looking at turnovers. I'm not doing the formula math of per. 
Um, he's, you know, because he's a bad three point shooter and because last night they lost the game with him taking a bunch of threes at the end and his legs have to be cooked. They have to be. This was a very sporty segment. It really was. It was. I enjoyed it. Don Lebatard. And Demolition Man is Drexler. You might, Absolutely you not. Have lost it. <laughs> not Die Hard can be here. Jordan. Drexler. Look, it's not a Paul Millsap. A couple more years. I mean, <laughs> no, you know what? You know what? I find you know what? His way in. No, I got career. it. Stugatz. I'll tell you what Demolition Man is. Demolition Man is Jamal McGlure. That's no. what I'm no. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. 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 No. No. Yes. No. No. Yes. Get out. That's disrespectful. Unbelievable. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. Catch me and Mike Gola Jr. every Sunday for weekend observations from 7 to 9 a.m. Eastern on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. Is anyone else tired of this? On first take right now, they're talking about Rockets Thunder. And the question on the screen is, is this series over already? Is anyone else tired of the home team wins two home games and the media goes to, is this series over already? One, they did a very good job, Oklahoma City did, of defending the three. Look at what happened last night. By the skin of their teeth, Houston got away with one. Get out of here. Home. Mike. Can only get, be Stephen A. Get your timing right, Mike. He was talking. And, yeah, Get I mean, your we're, timing right. We're talking about them, so I figured let's all watch it together, you know. No. I'm not tired of it. Well, what I was going to say is it gets to 2-0, and then the question becomes, is this series over? And then it goes on the road, and the road t- the home team wins the third game. Do we have a series again? <laughs> That's the next question. <laughs> yes. 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 And then, God forbid, if they win both at home, and then yes. is, is it over now, for the other team? No, now we have a series. <laughs> now we have a best of three. I'm listening, Q. He just said, Stephen A. just said, series is over, bro. Oh. It's terrible timing by you. If you're not familiar with what we do around here, yeah. it's hard to do. The degree of difficulty is very hard, and Mike Ryan has done a very good job, usually, although not that time. We go to first take live whenever Stephen A. is blowing a gasket about something, and then together we watch television. You may have seen where that one. You may have seen where that one failed in that we went to first take live and never heard from Stephen A. Smith. Right, it was Max, yeah. and that is Mike's fault. All me. So, let's repair this by playing audio of a tennis match in Florida. In Florida, everyone is always having sex, and these tennis players stopped having sex long enough to play tennis, but somewhere in the crowd at the Sarasota Open, who do I need to credit on the sound for this, Mike? ATPWorldTour.com. Okay, somewhere around here, there are people having very good, It's what sounds like very good sex. Once again, Law 15. Kruger has a steel phone in a deficit situation. Well, that is huh? the most bizarre situation. I don't know how to put this, folks, but somebody's phone going off in the stands. And it was an adult video. I still hear it. It's still going. What is going it on? It can't be that good! That was one of the tennis players saying the sex can't be that good. No, that's not a phone. That's an apartment across the lake. Oh my God! Forty fifteen. Well, at least somebody's having a good night. Uh, Allison, can you get me that announcer, please? I want to know what was happening there. Uh, do you guys believe that the sex was really that good, or was that a a woman and a man trying to be funny? Put it on the poll. That Levitard show. Was the sex that good? Yes or no? That's the question on the poll, just like that. At Levitard show. 
The Twitter poll is brought to you by Upside. Now say big on travel and get a big gift card every trip you buy. You'll love Upside.com. That's Upside.com. So if I give Russell Westbrook Anthony Davis, is Russell Westbrook still the best player on the team? I, I was uh, thinking about floating that one out there. I'm not entirely sure because I was like trying to stump you. I knew that you thought <laughs> Russell Westbrook was better than DeMarcus Cousins, but Anthony Davis, I think you would take Anthony Davis before Russell Westbrook. Probably. The the reason I'm asking the question, does it sound like I'm criticizing Russell Westbrook? Because I don't mean to be. What if you put Russ yeah. with uh, the Greek freak? Yeah. Yanni added a Kubo. Well, wait a minute. Who is better there? Well, right now See? it's Russ. Right See, now. it's a right. difficult, it's a deadly game throwing these out to you because you'll just do that, throw it back to the audience. Right. Well, okay, this is what we're talking about if you're just joining us. Russell Westbrook had a triple-double last night where he scored 50 points. It was an inefficient triple-double. I'd say a deadly game is a bit of an overstatement. Yes, it's not quite a deadly <laughs> Perhaps game. Perhaps a bit hyperbolic. Right. It is a game that is going to end up with you asking me this and then me throwing it back to you and asking you whether Russell Westbrook is indeed better. Russian roulette, right? Basically, uh, yes. Probably. How many players in the NBA? He's going to win MVP this year, but how many players do you believe are better than Russell Westbrook? Because I'd go about ten. Really, I'd say like five or six. And the reason that I ask the question is because LeBron James and Michael Jordan, when they had these supporting casts, they didn't win either. When they had the supporting cast that Westbrook has, right. they didn't win either, and they were more efficient basketball players than Russell Westbrook. One of the reasons that Russell Westbrook's per is so high is because his usage rate is so high. But when LeBron and Jordan were playing with this kind of roster, they still shot 50% or better. They did. I mean, LeBron got to the finals with, with a bad supporting cast. Jordan never even did that. Yeah, I um, think I would take Ilgowskis over... The second best player on Oklahoma City. But you understand what I'm saying. And I really don't mean it as a criticism of Russell Westbrook. I think that he's great. But I think that you need to have someone better than him in order to win. Right. And he did, and they still didn't win. But now more than ever, right? The day is done when you can win with just Dirk. That's over. That's over. You can't win with just Dirk anymore. Dirk won a championship without a lot of help. You can't do that he anymore. Actually, he actually, right. like when you look back on that roster, though, they had phenomenal players that were role players within that system. The team like, that beat the Heat, you're saying? Yeah, yeah. Tyson some, Chandler, right. Jason Terry wasn't a wash player back then. Jason Kidd was still a, a productive player. They had a really good roster built around him. He was just clearly the best player. Like that was their go to. But to Dan's point, Golden State, Mike, you said this earlier. They changed. They've changed everything. They changed the math. Right. You can't. You, you, you it's can't, not three anymore. It's four. Like but. in the early 2000s, Russell Westbrook and Demarcus Cousins win an NBA title and are prohibitive favorites, right? But well, you got the Lakers out there, and you got Shaq and Kobe. Probably not a great example, but I mean, they got five All Stars out there with Golden State. It's tough. Russ and Harden, do they win a championship? Well, no. It doesn't matter who's better. They're, let's just no. call them the same. No, because because the the reason that I ask this question is because in order for Russ and Harden to be that good. They need to both have the ball, and they can't both have the ball. There. And so the reason Houston is better, beyond D'Antoni, the reason Houston's better is because they got rid of Dwight Howard and got pieces that perfectly complement James Harden, and they're doing nothing but taking 43s a game. Ryan Anderson was terrible last night. Terrible, and it didn't matter. They just keep it, him and Lou Williams, they just throw him out there. Eric Gordon, just go out there, shoot all the threes that you want. They're perfect complements. I it I can't believe that it happened. It happened so fast, Stugatz, the that the Dwight Howard model became obsolete. Do you even want a good center right now? Honestly. Given the way the league is going. Well, the best teams don't have one. But I'm saying the Cavs, you, the Spurs, and the Warriors do you don't have one. Do even want to play that way? Do you even want to throw something into the post for two points to fight for two points? When you could get three from Eric Gordon. Honestly, I'm asking you, whatever your team is right now, do you want DeAndre Jordan? Do you want Hassan Whiteside? Do you want Andre Drummond? Because... Well, you want the seven-footer. You just prefer them to be DeMarcus Cousins or Giannis or Anthony Davis who could stretch the but, floor and but, go outside. But, but even then, the seven-footer's not winning anything right now unless it's Kevin Durant. Yeah, that's true. I mean, go bear as far as like your your prototypical big man. Like He's the guy that's furthest. And but they're, they're not winning anything. They're not winning that series, nope. probably, nope. in all likelihood. All those guys that you mentioned outside of go bear are not even in the playoffs. To find us on a station near you... Visit ESPN.com slash ESPN Radio 
and click the station locator tab. Don Levitard. America's fastest growing sports show. Stugats. Because when you start from zero and you have one viewer, you're growing fast. This is the Don Levitard Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Guests on the Dan Levitard Show appear via the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. Choose Shell V-Power Nitro Plus Premium Gasoline for the best total engine protection you can get. Here's your Sports Center update. Three game, two last nights in the NBA. Washington 109 101 over the Hawks to take a 2 0 series lead. Rockets get past the Thunder 115 111. Russell Westbrook 51 points, 13 rebounds. It's actually 13 assists, 10 rebounds in the loss. Rockets with a 2 0 series lead. And Golden State without Kevin Durant beat Portland 110 to 81 to go up 2 0 in their best of seven. Three, game, three games tonight in the NBA. Cavs at Pacers. Cleveland with a 2 nothing lead. Toronto and Milwaukee tied at one game apiece. Uh, uh, and finally, a Chinese man shoved a live eel up his... To cure constipation, he nearly died after the eel Burrowed through his intestines, the eel was pulled out of his intestines alive during an emergency surgical procedure. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. That was an unbelievably bad read. Uh, you were scared of everything there. You asked just, a lot there, man. I know. Yeah, you, I can yeah, only we, give a little at a time here. We, we asked you guys asked a for lot. a lot within a little 30 second sports. I mean, you were scared there. of Pacers. You were scared of everything. You were, well, no, 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 Mike. It's the speed bump. Dan is right. It's the speed bump. I know things are coming up, and therefore it affects my reading of the entire sports center. I and mean, you guys should know your teammates. So, uh, Twitter, you can reach us on Twitter at Lebetard Show, and Willie Dynamite does. He writes in, Dan. And this is just so sports argument. It's so sports radio. Right now, on the Undisputed, Skip Bayless is arguing about Mel Kuyper's draft. Don't we get to keep anything? I mean, First Fake gets to steal all of it. (laughs) They're arguing about Trubisky and Mel Kuyper's draft. The sports argument is something that is ever present, it's always there for you. So Willie Dynamite writes the following. Dan, there is no way in hell there are 10 players better than Westbrook. He's top five. Easily. And so now we have a discussion. (laughs) Is he? Are you sure? I don't think it's top five easily. I think it might be seven. I may be willing to give him six because he keeps putting up triple doubles. Maybe, but not in my five, (laughs) and certainly not easily. (laughs) He must stay out of my five. This show is fantastic today. Mm-hmm. Best show in years. Yes. I've got him top six. Mm. I've got Giannis Antetokounmpo right behind him. He's, he's, he's good. He's good. He's still growing. So mm-hmm. progressive. Seven. I got, Seven. I got Steph Curry. I got LeBron. I got... Uh, Durant. James Harden. Durant. What happened? Uh, Durant. Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi. Uh-huh. But that's it. That's it. That's, that's the old. That's the, that's it on the list. That's it. <laughs> what do I do with that? You I don't are, know. You are so powerful. But talk about Trubisky some because he's an interesting <laughs> prospect. I don't know what to cover line. Didn't necessarily have the big wins. A lot of questions can throw on the run. Big fans of what Mel has to say. It seems as though there's a bit of a disconnect between Mel uh-huh. and Todd. Uh-huh. Here is here, here are your thoughts on the matter, please. <laughs> Why can't we just be satisfied saying that they're all in the top 500? There's 449 players on the opening day roster this year, Dan. A couple people came in and out, so let's just say these are the top 500 best basketball players in the world. 
<laughs> okay, very good. That's better. We need to do some work on your entrance, though. Like, it's very clunky, and we're just sitting there and waiting around for your Angel of Nuance music. And you're not really nuanced. You're just agreeable. Is this guy literally going to take my shine every time? Yeah. Like, I got to go to the mini array and go play his <laughs> intro every time I come to the mic. Why couldn't I have anything? <laughs> this was my life. <laughs> That's right. You're behaving like Vin Diesel right now, threatened by the greatness of The Rock. I think there's enough room for both of us. <laughs> you are useless. I should man. slap you across the face <laughs> with my talent. You should. You should, because he's useless. Leave claw marks on his agreeable face. I will have entrails in my mouth. Yes, I am with you. And you will watch me as I eat your stomach. Yes, I am with you, demon of debate. Except for that whole Westbrook at five thing. I can't abide that. I'm sorry. What? Yeah, I can't what? abide it. I got to put okay, it Okay, as fish. long as you agree that I made some pretty solid points about Trubisky. <laughs> and what is this? He wants to go by Mitchell stuff. You're Mitch. I decide your name. What is that? Why does he want to well, go by no, Mitch? No, no, I'm a professional. Get That's out of here. Name. You're Mitch. Yeah. You're lucky I call you Mitch. <laughs> Why? Okay. Because it's, you know, it's just something I say. All yeah, right, very good. <laughs> good talking to you. Thank well, you for having me on the program. All right. I'll, I'll, call, you listen. I'll call you Mitchell once you prove something. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You have not earned You have not earned the Mitchell. Mitchell. I call you what you are. <laughs> Out of the combo rules. What do you have to do? What do you have to do? MVP. Your... Okay. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> or if he wins, like, a game as a Cleveland Brown. Okay. It's like, just a game. game. Yes, it's the same thing. Basically. Will you shut up? Yep. Not you again! I think if he wants to go by Mitchell, we should respect his wishes. <laughs> his parents named him that, Dan. You are not nuanced! I don't understand all the difficulties you have with nuance. You're just friendly! We can't all be great at everything, Dan! <laughs> Is this good radio? No! <laughs> I so hope that the majority of the audience had never tuned in before that moment. Before all of that. That's their first taste? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a new first take. We're first taste. And it's disagreeable. It's bitter. It's bad bok choy. Don Lebatard. You're a record setting liar. Stugatz. We need to get Guinness up here to measure who's the, the. I mean, he's not the best liar, he's the worst liar. But in terms of volume of lies. He's kind of Hank Aaron. This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Pick from a range of coverage options with a name your price tool to find a price that works for you. Mike Cation, USTA Pro Circuit Tennis announcer, going to join us in just a second here on the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. Here's your Sports Center update. Last night in the Stanley Cup playoffs, Capitals beat the Maple Leafs 5 to 4, splitting the series at 2. Senators beat the Bruins 1-0 and now lead the series three games to one. Wild stave off elimination, beating the Blues 2-0 two uh, two and are now down three games to one. And the Ducks sweep the Flames, winning 3-1. to one. Tonight, Game 5, Rangers at Canadians with the series tied at two games apiece. Game 5, Blue Jackets at Penguins. Pittsburgh leads the series three games to one. Game 4, Blackhawks at Predators. Nashville leads that series Three games to none, and Game 5, Sharks at Oilers, with the series split at two. And finally, according to the Wrestling Observer, the song Glorious was, in fact, not written for Bobby Roode. It was actually written for Shinsuke Nakamura, who turned the song down because he didn't feel it fit him. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. Texter writes in, I've been listening for years, but it's not until you watch the show on ESPNU and ESPN2 that you realize just how utterly devoid of emotion Roy is. <laughs> he hasn't smiled. At I mean, he's not devoid of emotion. That emotion is just always brooding. That's true. <laughs> we got Mike Cation on the line. Man. All right, let's exciting. get to him. ATPWorldTour.com. This is where that sound comes from of people having sex while Mike Cation is trying to do his job broadcasting a tennis tournament. Let's play that sound for the people. Once again, Law 15. Kruger has a steel phone in a deficit situation. Well, that is. Huh? The most bizarre situation 
I don't know how to put this, folks, but somebody's phone going off in the stands. And it was an adult video. I still hear it. It's still going. What is going it on? It can't be that good! <laughs> yeah, that is one of the tennis players there. Mike Cation with us now. USTA Pro Circuit. Uh, Mike, you hear that sound, and thank you for joining us. You think what when you hear, not that sound, the sound that we just played for you? Yeah, no, I can't believe this is my life right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, it, it was just the craziest situation. As you guys know, as longtime broadcasters, you try to prepare for about anything that could possibly happen in a day, and this was not even possibly on the docket. So, but you hear the sound now, and the fact that you thought it was a video. Have you done any other journalistic investigative work to find out what exactly was happening there? Yeah, no, see, so I had to talk to my producers right afterwards, and yeah, it, it wasn't a video at all. It wasn't a phone. I mean, there was a window that was wide open. Not only was the window wide open, I mean, you had the curtains that were wide open as well. I mean, the whole thing was just fully out there in the public wait a minute so you could see what was actually happening from where you were i couldn't but the, one of my producers went out there and said yeah that it, I, I can see which window it's coming from he couldn't see the action but he could tell it was that window yeah oh, it was oh. it was these were people who wanted to have uh, everything heard and seen yeah okay so was it indeed good sex or were they putting on a show because they wanted to be heard by you i don't think that there's any doubt that they wanted to be heard Okay. I can put it that way. Okay. Uh, what, yeah. Was there's, it good sex, no yes or no? Was it good, re <laughs> was that real it? good sex, yes or no? According, you know, listen. Answer the question. Good I want the truth. <laughs> I think it was great. Okay. I, I had a great time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you seem shocked when you said it was still going. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, honest to God, because at that moment, I still thought it was a phone. So I'm like, okay, somebody grab your phone and turn it off, for the love of God, so we can play tennis. And then when I realized it was still going, oh, no. I, I, I'm thinking I have to explain this, and there are going to be kids listening. Oh, yes. What? Uh, <laughs> how, how long did it last? We have that sound. How much longer did it last? It went for a total of about two minutes. And, again, well done to keep up that level of intensity. And, uh, and and was it only the woman that you heard from, or did the man make, I'm assuming a man, I might not want to be gender binary here, but I'm assuming a man, was there was, was there any sounds of a man? Or she might have been no. alone. She might have been alone. Uh, it, it, listen, it was very quiet from the gentleman, so I think he was just proud of what was going on. Okay, very good. Right. Any other facts that we need to know before we let you go? You've done excellent work here. <laughs> I salute you on all your broadcasting efforts. Anything else you think we need to know about this situation before we let you go? You know, I'm, I'm hoping that we possibly get them on the broadcast, the couple, uh, at some point this week. You can watch it, ProCircuit.USTA.com. And, and uh, nice. you know, All if right. you'd like, we have some great tennis action, too. Okay, All grand. Right. Not so interested in that. Get but, the couple. But, we'll you're, watch. but you're actually trying to get the couple if indeed it is a couple? We know which apartment it's from. Okay, good work. <laughs> Mike, you're doing excellent work. You're doing the Lord's work. Excellent job by you. <laughs> Boys, thanks so much. All, All, right. Right. All right. Very good. Got to the bottom of I that. feel like we sort of did. Yeah. I feel like we have closure on all of this now. Everyone feel good about this? Yep. Allison, find the couple. No. <laughs> what was that sound? No, call back. No, seriously. What was call that back? loud sound <laughs> Allison just made? Her saying, no. No. <laughs> that, that's the kind of sex we have around here. No. Call my Cation back since they know the room number. Ask for the room and let's even get the couple. Wow, they didn't Stugatz. know the room number. They knew the building. Stugatz is good at telling oh, everybody how to do their job, man. If only. I mean, I'll do it. I'm happy to do it. No, she, she's pretty good at her job. She doesn't want to. It's She's not saying no because she doesn't want to chase them down. She's saying no because she saw how those four minutes just went. <laughs> We've pretty much covered the terrain here. What else is there to be asked? That's a woman who wanted to be heard by that crowd. The sex wasn't actually that good. I mean, I'm reporting it. Mike. I've got 25 years of journalism credentials behind me. I am reporting as a fact the sex was not that good, according 
to sources. All right, so you're citing your journalism <laughs> yes, experience yes. and not other experiences. No, I mean, well, and the other experiences. I'm also citing the other experiences Because I have about well. four years of that experience. Yes, I have, I've, I've had so much experience with that after I turned 40. <laughs> Was that good or bad? I don't know. I mean, it sounded like it was really good, but you're saying that it wasn't possible. <laughs> no, I'm talking about the segment. Oh. I'm talking about talking to Mike Cation because we like to take. I just love. I, is that the only guest we've had on this week? No, we had uh, Kevin Ornovitz. <laughs> <laughs> Allison is so mad right now. Allison is so mad that the guest list marquee this week has been Kevin Arnovitz and, and the broadcaster from the Sarasota Open. That's a good get, though. That was a good get, get, Allison. Good, good job. Good no wonder Stugatz is telling you how to do your job. The evidence this week would reveal that you're not very good at it. <laughs> oh, no. More money. I know, Don't right? Him. This is oh, going to no. be so bad. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah, she is so mad right now. Oh, no. Kevin Arnovitz. Kevin Arnovitz provided a show highlight for us. Kevin Arnovitz ended up not hearing Tone Loke. Um, and he didn't, uh, you know, we were playing that Damon, that David Fisdale sound, and he couldn't hear Tone Loke in it. Did you guys see that the Grizzlies? Ended up paying that fine for Fisdale. Yeah, the players. Yeah. They got together. $30,000 fine. They got together and ended up paying it for him. Pretty cool. Don Lebatard. Is this a middle school show or a big boy show? Stugatz. It's kind of a middle school show. This is the Don Lebatard show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. Get in touch with the show anytime to the 1-800-Flowers Twitter feed at Levitard Show at Stugat790. Dan, it's time for Straight Talk. It's presented by Straight Talk Wireless. Best phones, best networks, half the cost. This is a quote from Charles Barkley. Quote for all you nitwits, scumbags, idiots, punks. To use my name to draw ratings, don't do that. I've talked to Isaiah. He didn't take offense to that. We needed somebody. That's something we do in the sports media. We need... Once you have the video of Isaiah Thomas crying on the sidelines, right. lost his sister of 22 years old in a car wreck, and he's crying right there in the gym in front of people, heartbroken, you need somebody to give voice in order to create content somebody to give voice that sounds critical or negative and Barkley wasn't very critical all he was wondering about was is Isaiah Thomas fit to play in that condition which seems a fair question I thought, it was, I thought it was a dumb controversy because everything else that he said, Dan, was honest, uh, emotional, concern for Isaiah Thomas, and people just latched on to an improper use of him saying that's not a good look, that's a bad look. I remember thinking, why is he questioning that? I do remember when Charles said it. I remember thinking, why is he questioning but what whether I'm or not Isaiah but, Thomas? But, but can what play I'm saying is, this is we've talked about this before: the angry mob culture of Twitter. And sports radio, we've talked before about the idea of when something like this presents itself, there is no way for us to talk about it in the sports media in a way that creates content. You could say, oh, that's heartbreaking, but ultimately so much of sports media content is driven by what divides, what can we argue about? And so we need Charles Barkley on that wall. Sure, yes. We need him to be as unafraid <laughs> as he is of all the nitwits and idiots and everything else that he called us. We need him to be unafraid so that it produces content for us. His objection here by saying, don't use me to draw ratings, is a fair objection because it's exactly what we're doing. But he gave us the angle and gave us something to talk about but, as it relates to But if to he Isaiah hadn't, Thomas. somebody would have, and then we would have You're had right. the talking point. It's just always so curious whenever, because Barkley always refers to the media as you guys, you nitwits, when he's a member of the media, and because he's a member of the media, he gave an opinion and it became something. And he's always providing content for us. We should be thankful for Charles and just his general demeanor that he's unafraid of any of this 
nonsense. I want to ask you guys at Levitard Show. He's unafraid of it because nothing seems to stick to him. He could say basically whatever he wants. Seems like it, yeah. yeah. He's got a freedom to roam that most do not. At Levitard Show, it's just so great to do a job fearlessly. It's the best way to do a job. Do you want to hear an old Stugatz restaurant reservation? That's the question I want on the poll. We'll play it for you next segment. You decide. We're going to do some democracy around here before we get to Allison's beefs because she's mad at us. I think this is the first one we ever did, right, Mike? 420? I think it's the first restaurant reservation we ever did. And, and there's no way we could recreate it and make it better because I think I peaked right there on the first one. Well, yeah, and and they'd see you coming by now. Right. Well, it's uh, it's from last 420, and it's four minutes long, and it was really good. And if you don't know what these restaurant reservations are, Stugatz is totally shameless. He will call a place and try to get a restaurant reservation. And we've done this, I don't know, five or six times now, where we call the busiest places in America on impossible days, and he makes impossible asks, and it'll make your skin crawl, but it's also delightfully entertaining. So the question is, do you want to hear last year's yes or no? So people might be asking nationally why is, because locally I think they know about this place, why is 420 a difficult time or a difficult day to get a reservation? There is a restaurant down here in which people make, I think Mike's friend works or or is part owner of the restaurant, a where chef, people are making chef. reservations a year out for this particular Yeah, yeah, place. they have a special right. menu on right. 420 every right. year, and it's a big deal locally. Right. All right, so uh, you guys decide whether you want to hear that next segment or not. Allison, Allison's really mad at us. She says booking this show is really hard. She's mad at me? She's mad at everybody, I'm I not, think. Well, I, it's funny that you say that. I'm not mad, but you are an admitted guest snob, and you say no to everybody. And Mike's worse. Mike says no to everybody and then some. So, Well, he's I mean, just applying my sensibilities there. Is it? It's just people. I, it, he's just protecting me so that I don't have to go through reams and reams of of no's, no, no. He's just using my sensibility. He probably, what percentage of the guests, Mike, that I say no to or that you say no to on my behalf do you actually want? Oh, that that's a good question. There, I, I'd say I'm saying no to a lot of people. Percentage-wise, I'm saying no to about maybe 35% of people I'd actually have an interest in talking to, but I just know you don't get like, it. Like, who bothers you, Allison? Who have we said no to that I mean, it bothers everything. you? I mean, yeah, it all bothers you. You don't want to talk to anybody. So there's plenty of interesting, because your criteria to me when you hired me is I like interesting. And there's plenty of interesting people to talk to, but you guys want A-list and only A-list and nothing else. Well, and see, random, you know, people in Shanghai or, you know, like random. And Kevin Arnovit. I, I share your pain on this because I used to do it with you. and But it, you have to apply what's interesting to Dan, not what's interesting to me, you, or Mike Ryan. What, what Dan might find interesting. And I keep telling you, I used to do this, and Mike is happy I'm no longer doing it at all. But if Mike said no, I used to just go directly to Dan and try to sell it into him. Well, hold on a second, though. This is not the part I thought you were going to object to. I thought you were going to object to what, what it is that we were doing last week where you were saying that I ruin relationships for you and that somebody, oh, yeah. that a fellow guest booker said to you, I hate the job that you have to do. I feel bad for you in that job. Yeah, that's true. You do that a well, lot. Well, how with, often? With most of the, Sorry. Most of the people in the sports world, yeah, it's harder to book for you athletes. Way harder. I mean, the Milwaukee Bucks, they don't even talk to me. I mean, Cleveland, forget <laughs> any living human being that lives in Cleveland, forget it. Well, that's no not trying. We're not getting it. Yeah, I'm done with Cleveland. Right. Well, but how many how many bridges have we burned? How many? Uh, give me. When she says Cleveland, she means all of Cleveland. Right. Like, what the you Indians, did with LeBron, I yeah, called the yeah. Indians, who used to be very good to us, and suddenly Terry Francona didn't want to come on anymore. I mean, how many have... I, yeah, I want to know. Man. I want a list. I know. I want... So all of Cleveland. All of Cleveland. Do we have a problem with the WWE? Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yeah. Yep. Uh, I, I, at least the last I left, we had a big problem with the Memphis Grizzlies. In large part, we were banned by the. I love this. We've I've been banned by them twice. Actually. Twice. Yeah, I, twice. I love this. I love being. Shot, right. This show's too hot for sports. It's too hot for America. Edgy and groundbreaking. Dangerous. With Kevin Arnovitz. I didn't even book him, so somebody did. I don't know. Yeah, I got that one this week. So, yeah, you love it, but I, that this is what you get. You get a list of Kevin Arnold. The show's unpredictable. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know who's going to show up and be offended. I mean, Michael Rosenberg showed up yesterday. Deion Sanders, are you a sex addict? Okay, not that. my best He's work. Admittedly, no. not my no. best work. Yep. I asked the interesting questions. Put it on the poll, Guillermo, at Levitar Show. Does Dan ask the interesting questions uh, 
We had... Who'd you it, accuse of a drinking problem? That was Warren Moon. Yeah, that yeah. was Warren Moon. Yeah, you Bruce, who, who was eating children? Who was doing that? Who was eating children? Patrick Willis. Patrick, Patrick Willis. Willis. I accused yeah. Patrick Willis, who was very serious about denying right. that he ever ate children. Right. What we do to Jimmy Butler? Oh, that was bad. That one's on me. No, that was on them. That was on. Yeah, that was actually on, on that. Yeah, yeah, that was, was uh, that was. was on the company that was doing it for Kellogg. No, they didn't tell me I couldn't talk about it. No, anything. Jimmy Butler was doing something on behalf of homeless people or feeding the hungry, and I asked him specifically if he had any experience with that, and then he got mad and shut down. Uh, but I I take the blame for that one. Uh, man, that's a long list. We got a long list of people. Uh, do you think Bill O'Reilly will come on the show? You we- think that's just the list? Yeah. <laughs> we're not done yet. We're just, All right, well, we're let's, just getting started. Well, let's keep doing this. I want to keep doing it. We're a danger, dangerous, edgy Michael show. Phelps, let's play Phelps, the let's, baseball. Let's, yep. Oh, baseball. All of baseball. All of baseball. Let's play the sound of baseball. Bill O'Reilly mm-hmm. hanging up on our show. Uh, ultimately, this is what he was thinking about, right? What he was thinking about. I didn't, he, honest to God, this is honest to God, true story. When I was asking him this question, I did not have an answer in mind, but I just figured, hey, you're the guy, no spin zone, right? We can ask anything because we're not spinning. And evidently, what he was trying to avoid was ultimately what ended up getting 30 sponsors pulled and all of a sudden the end of uh, the most popular show in the history of cable news. Is there anything in your career that brings you shame? Anything that you've done that you're embarrassed of? Nope. I think we've been an honest uh, purveyor of the news. Never had a retractor story. Made mistakes, and we make them, we correct them. And it's because we're very careful, and we're very honest. But what's the biggest one? What's the one that caused you the most unrest? Because it's not fun to go through those things. I'm not going to get into any of that stuff. <laughs> um, so if you guys have another question, I'm good. If not, we'll oh, say goodbye. Well, wait a minute. What do you mean you're not going to get into any of that stuff? I don't understand. Like We'll see you guys. Thanks for making the uh, time. I appreciate it. <laughs> Don Libertard. Not passionate about sports yet. Uh, gave up his vote in the Hall of Fame to protest all the wrong. I'm mm-hmm. passionate about jokes. And I'm passionate about total anarchy. So billboards, jokes, anarchy. Lose my Hall of Fame vote, jokes, anarchy. Stugats. And attention, it seems like. Yes. Oh, he loves that. That too, my friend. A whole lot of look at me cloaked in integrity. This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. So as we go back in the Wayback Machine here... Charles Ramsey was going to be security for Mike Ryan at the Akron homecoming of LeBron James. It was all a joke, all meant to be funny. ESPN punished me harshly. Uh, the, it cost me a lot in that the billboards were you know, pretty expensive. And then on top of that, I got suspended for two days with pay. And ESPN really showed me, uh, without pay, excuse me, without pay, suspended without pay. And ESPN showed us by then soon thereafter promoting us. So <laughs> I've learned my lesson, but they nuked the whole thing. It, it just, it was going to be a lot more than just the billboards in Cleveland. I was going to earn Terry Francona, Francona never being on our show, but again, because all of the <laughs> Cleveland stations banned us and all the Cleveland people banned us. It was so odd because Bart Swain, who's the media relations guy for the Indians, Loved our show. Was so good to us. Would get us guests all the time. I called him like a day or two later to get. I think it was Terry Francona, and he said, "Nope, yep. not doing it." They're in cahoots. They all hate us. Uh, but it would have been so much better if this guy right here had been security. He had agreed we were going to pay him. We'd come to terms with Charles Ramsey. He was going to be security for Mike Ryan. This guy. What was the reaction on the girls' faces? I can't imagine to see the sunlight to be Bro, around people. I knew something was wrong when a little pretty white girl ran into a black man's arms. Something is wrong here. Dead giveaway. Dead Charles, giveaway. Charles, thank you very Dead much. Dead giveaway. Thank you very much for your time. And- Either she homeless or she got problems. That's the only reason why she ran to a black man. <laughs> that guy. All right, wait. The vote has come in, so let's go ahead and do this, Mike. The vote has come in. The people have spoken. They want Stugatz's uncomfortable restaurant reservations from 420. This is Stugatz trying to get into a local restaurant here on an impossible day. Eating house? Yeah, how you doing? Hi, how are you? Uh, I'm doing well, thanks. I was uh, I was hoping I could make a reservation with you guys. Sure, for which day? And just give me a party size. Uh, I'm looking at uh, April 20th. Uh, a table of eight at eight o'clock, prime time, man. Okay. Uh, so unfortunately, for four twenty, we already sold out the dinner. 
What? Um, it's an annual dinner we do every year celebrating uh, the holiday. And unfortunately, it's been booked up for about a week now. Really? Yeah. We are taking a waiting list. We'd gladly put you on a waiting no, list. No, and, no, uh, no. We, I, don't do, I don't want to do a waiting list. I mean, listen, I, I don't know. Like, there's no comfortable way for me to do this, so I'll, I'll just do it. Like, you know, I don't know. Do you listen to sports radio at all? Of course, of course. Yeah, we're lots of, we're lots of sports radio fans here. Okay. Big Heat fans. This is Stugatz, man. What's up, Stugatz? How are you, buddy? Good, bro. I mean, I don't know. Listen, I, I appreciate you listening. I'm glad you knew who I was. Uh, I don't know if you could help me out in this regard, though. I'll, I'll, I'll promote you guys uh, all I can, but I just if, if I can get this table for 8 at 8, that'd be awesome on 420. Man, as much as I would love to help you out, we actually have, we have no room. I mean, I just feel like, I don't know, like can, uh, the people who have the reservations right now, can they promote you out to a national audience to millions of people? Because I don't think they can. I know I can. No, no, no. They definitely you know? can't. They definitely, I mean, right. maybe they can, but you know, the thing is, those are, those I mean, are who the hell loyal. are these people? That's what I want to know. Who man, are these people? So they're guests, man. We got repeat guests that have been waiting for a year for this dinner to come back in. Okay? We got to stay loyal to the people, man. Been waiting for a year? We have some. I'm sorry. I wish I could help you out a little more, but uh, do I, but need I don't to speak think to, it's possible. I think I'm going to need to speak to the owner, man. I am the owner, actually. Oh, you're the owner? I am. I am. You're shutting me out, and you're the owner? I'm sorry, man. I can't do that to my people. Well, well what about this person? I know, man, but I, we're booked up. We're, we're fully booked. What if booked, Lepitard you know, called? Just... What if Lepitard called? I bet you if Lepitard I... called, you would let Lepitard in, right? You would let I, Lepitard I, I, in. I, 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 I... I'd have to let Levitard know that that he needed to reserve. Levitard's been to the restaurant, man. We're, we're big fans of his as well. I, I'm guessing I, we're, we're booked. I'm guessing we're if Levitard up. called right you, now. You, I don't think you've been to Eating House. I, I know Levitard's been to Eating House. I know Mike's been to Eating House. I don't think you've been to Eating House. Well, it just so happens that Mike got a reservation on 420, and I can't. I know, but Mike reserved a week and a half ago. Maybe you should kick Mike out and replace him with me. How do you feel about that? I mean, like that. If he's willing to do that, I mean, we can make that happen. Uh, I'll deal with Mike. Just put me down, okay? I'll deal with Mike. Now, what size party was Mike's? Mike was a two top. What's a two top? So we have people? It's still two people. Yeah, it's going to be difficult to get six more, man. How about this? What if 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 we can make a little picnic setting up outside? We can bring a couple extra tables and a couple extra chairs. You guys would be willing to do that. Maybe I, we can work something out. I think that sounds okay. great for the people that you're going to kick out of the restaurant to accommodate the, the eight. That, makes, that yeah. makes perfect sense. Right. So I think you should sense. offer that. Like, I think you should go back in, in the reservations and maybe call some people and say, hey, listen. All right. We've listen, had, you know, listen. wants to come. No, I wouldn't even say Stugatz is want to come. This is how you do it, okay? I would say that, listen, man, we, we're overbooked. I apologize. We're overbooked. We will make it up, up to you. We will guarantee you next year 420. We will guarantee you a table for whatever at 8 o'clock. This year, though, I have to put you outside, picnic, you know, the whole deal. I think that's the way you do it. Don't tell them it's for that's, me. Just say you're overbooked. That makes sense. Right, I'm going to so, have to talk to my business partner about this, though. All right, well, this, man. So all right, all right. If my business partner agrees, man, we're, we're fair game. All right, well, sounds good. So I'll see you uh, 420, uh, 8 o'clock. Sure. What we're going to have to do is we're obviously going to have to confirm with you beforehand. We're going to let you know if it did work out or not. But as of right now, we'll just put that reservation on hold. If we do manage to get to the room, I'll see you at 8 o'clock, definitely. All right, well, this is the confirmation. I'm telling you, it's 8 o'clock, 8 people, 420. <laughs> Confirm? Good. See ya. <laughs> it's so <laughs> cringeworthy. Got in, though. His shamelessness is so disgusting and wildly entertaining. Don Lebatard. I am aging so much here by the day. I really am. It's bad what's happening here. It's beautiful to watch. Oh, my God. It's just so vulnerable and awful. Like, I can't get anything right. Stugatz. Uh, <laughs> Keep laughing. The gravy dreaming is going straight into the sewer. Keep laughing. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Guest on the Dan Lebatard Show will appear via the Shell Pennzoil performance line. Josh Norman going to join us there in a half hour, 1230 Eastern. Here's your Sports Center update. Indiana University has instituted a policy that bans any prospective student athletes, whether a transfer student, incoming freshman, or other status who has been convicted of or pleaded guilty or no contest to a felony involving sexual violence. The NBA has fined Boston Celtics guard Marcus Smart $25,000 for making an obscene gesture towards a fan during Tuesday's Game 2 loss in Chicago. And finally... 
a 24-year-old woman broke into Drake's L.A. home while he was away and did nothing but drink his soda. She's presently being held on a $100,000 bail. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. I've told you guys before that I get a private show with Stugatz every day. It's horrifying. And today during the break, you would have marveled at all of the people, male and female, that he said aren't going to age well. Let's keep those names to ourselves, Dad. Otherwise attractive people that Stugatz was just totally comfortable saying, she's not going to age well, he's not going to age well. And I'm staring at him, and he's unshaven, and he's wearing flip-flops, and he's wearing a 12-year-old T-shirt. And I'm like, you realize we are not qualified to be telling anybody, not Paul Giamatti, not anyone, oh, Giamatti. that they're not aging well. And Stugatz, like, he can feel my, my judgment as I'm saying this to him. And you know what he says to me? I still got it. I do. I feel like if I were out on the open market, um, I'd be having a field that. I do. I do. I, like, I, listen. I'm still. I'm a good looking guy. I haven't aged that much, have I? Put it on the poll. If Stugatz were single, out on the open market. Out on the open market. <laughs> would he be killing it? Well, because listen. I am armed with things that when I was actually single before I was married that I was not armed with. I am armed with a national radio show, a national TV show. I'm on Sports Center, Mike and Mike, ESPN. I'd be killing it. I'm thinking about it. I mean, that works like at sports bars with like, you know, well, Joe Sports Fan. Uh, I think I you'd be real surprised. Oh. Actually. No, no, no. I'm going to go the other way on this. How few women are actually interested in this really kind of fame? Huh. It's all men. It's all men. I'd be killing it if I were gay. Oh yeah, killing it. Put on the poll, Guillermo. Would Dan be killing it if he were gay? Oh no. I'd be having all that sex that you hear at Sarasota tennis tournaments over the lake. This is courtesy of <laughs> the give credits here. ATP Tour. This would be me. <laughs> Once again. Law 15. Kruger has a steel phone in a deficit situation. Well, that is the most bizarre situation. I don't know how to put this, folks, but somebody's phone going off in the stands. And it was an adult video. I still hear it. It's still going. What is going on? It can't be that good! (laughs) That is the tennis player himself screaming that on the court. We had that broadcaster on an hour ago, Michael Cation, and you can check out the podcast if that's something that you want to hear. He was on with us, the broadcaster, who was confused, thinking that... Uh, somebody's phone was going off, and it wasn't people having sex across the lake. It's still funny to me how shocked he is when he says it's still going because he's never. It seems like what he's saying there is, "I've never yes, had sex." I'm Rick. I'm Rick Patino. Yeah, <laughs> and you can find that podcast on the ESPN app, iTunes, Slacker, TuneIn, various uh, pod hosting sites. So you're telling me all these platforms we have, all this because you're single. You've never been married. I'm married. Obviously. Women aren't impressed by it. The only time women make an appearance, they make an appearance with their boyfriends or their husbands. Hmm. Like the w- women, the, the women who listen to this show are introduced to this show by their men. Uh, anyway, what I want to get to here, because Dugatz is saying that he'd be killing it, 
Uh, Sarah Spain's going to be in here with us tomorrow. We're all a little bit afraid of her. She's the commissioner of our league. We have a lot of outstanding debts. I imagine she's going to, uh, you know, she's going to make us pay with some shame. Mike Ryan has been dieting here really stringently. He's only eating pudding um, because he's very afraid. What do you have to do tomorrow? What are you doing tomorrow to how many outstanding debts do oh, we have? Royal on this loan has like 25. Oh, for like I can't, God, I can't man. count on the dude to go to a gas station and get a taquito. Really? Look, I think dude, dude, Roy's so bad at this. Wow. I really hope. Although the last time that they did one of these face offs, Roy and Sarah, he's like, whatever. You pay for me getting a, a new painting? Sure. Yeah. Uh, Roy uh, Roy outsmarted the commissioner last time. How many outstanding debts does Roy have? It's, well, it's getting to the teens. But is it on Roy, or are we not getting him the proper things he needs for Roy to do? Well, like, Roy just doesn't care, does not put in any of the work. And Roy pick, picks some, like, really difficult ones. Like, he's got to go to, a, like, a cryo lab and get, like, <laughs> cryotherapy. And he... he won't pick up a phone, won't do a Google search, just assumes I'm going to do it. And these are all essentially punishments for Mike. Okay, so Sarah's going to be here tomorrow, and she's probably going to whip everybody into shape. But Mike is eating only pudding, because what do you have to do tomorrow on the show? Uh, I'm doing the dog face gremlin, which I have to dress up like Rick Steiner, which on the surface wouldn't seem so bad, but it was a week where like eight people were going to a grid, so I thought there was no way that I was going to lose that week, and that was a huge upset. So I bought this really sexual singlet for Amino Hassan. I mean, it's a singlet that you wear during sex. Like, it's bad. There's a pouch and everything. I got a dog collar. I'm basically <laughs> semi-nude. Like, I'm wearing, like, right. just compression shorts basically tomorrow. And I got to wear, like, these, like, ear protectors. It's going to be bad. I'm going to wear electrical tape over my nipples. Okay, very good. <laughs> so we're all looking forward to that. That's going to be tomorrow on the show, ESPNU and ESPN2. Don't uh, don't me and Dan owe one together? Isn't there something we're I think to do? I only have one debt, I yeah. think. Dan and Stu, uh, we thought it would be funny that they do it on the same day. It's a tribute to George Michael. Dan needs to dress up as George Michael uh, in faith, and Stu Gods has to dress up as Wham! George Michael. I have those outfits in my house. Okay. I try them on private. Yeah, right. Uh, Mike didn't buy them. He just has those yeah, outfits right. in his house. Yes. You also have to go bowling with Greg as part of Dan Day. Yeah, oh, otherwise man. you get an automatic uh, oh, death. Oh, wow, you didn't do that yet? No, I haven't done oh, that yeah, yeah. You and Greg are safe like only if you one. go on a field trip bowling. If you do not fulfill this Dan Day by the start of the next season, you both get a death. Wait, should we knock all these out? Well, not the bowling with Greg. Should we knock out? What Dan and I have to do tomorrow, along with what you have to do. I mean, Sarah's that's a lot going on. I typically like to do, you know, one a day to really get the most out of these. Okay. This is a big digital push. Okay. I forgot all about this damn bowling day I have with Greg Cody. Uh, let's throw some actual sports into this segment for the new ESPN2 audience. Charles Barkley uh, went off on all the people criticizing him for saying it was a bad look for Isaiah Thomas to grieve in public. Uh, and so here's Charles Barkley last night. Uh, reacting to our criticism. I want to address something that really bothered me. Well, I heard that all these nitwit fools, idiots, were complaining what I was saying about Isaiah Thomas the other night, making me uncomfortable. Number one, I don't care what y'all think. I don't care what your mom and daddy think either, just for the record. But to insinuate what I was trying to, or what I was saying, I'm uncomfortable talking about his pain and then going to basketball. For all you knitted, nitwit, idiot, punks to try to make that a story because y'all uh, don't have ratings and use my name to draw ratings, don't do that. If you don't have any talent, just accept the fact you don't have any talent. Let me be me. Uh, I've talked to Isaiah. He didn't take any offense to that. But I was talking about, I wish him and his family nothing but the best. Before you punk to try to make a big deal out of something, it just pisses me off, obviously. Okay, so I'm good and now. And now you're good. That's, <laughs> well, good. at least let us know so we can join in next time. No, because they, like, I was buying my own business yesterday, and they were like, did Charles Barkley cross a line? Over the, over the one word, uncomfortable. Uh, what you, I, I don't get it. Because thank you. you. Uh, thank know, you, Kenny. Because we were sitting here discussing that the other What's day. What's comfortable about a young man having a tragic death in his family? They made a story. There's nothing comfortable about that. Thank you. That's uh, Inside the NBA. Uh, audio is courtesy of TNT. I love that he made nitwits fool idiots one word.
<laughs> I love that it's just one word. I never objected to him being uncomfortable, by the way. I objected to, I objected to the fact that he thought maybe he shouldn't be playing. Well, he said, uh, well, wait a minute. He said it's a bad look. That's the thing that people seized on to, you know, the idea that he was telling Isaiah Thomas how to grieve. But I understood the point that Charles was trying to make and wondering whether he should be playing, wondering whether he was in a mental state to play. Stugatz, if you suffered that kind of loss, would you go to work the next day? Would any of us? Um, Probably not. But I also wouldn't judge someone or even question someone if they decided but, to go to but work. I guess I, that I, was... But see, this is the thing. Are we now in the age, in, in 2017, is that synonymous? Questioning someone is criticism? Like, I think it's a legitimately fair question. If a guy is sobbing on the sidelines before a game, is that guy capable of doing his job? Is that criticizing someone, or is that just asking a question that's reasonable? Like, those things don't strike me as synonymous. I, what's unfair about asking if a guy is sobbing on the sideline is ready to play? Well, you're, you're sitting in a studio thousands of miles away. The guy's on the sideline during a very emotional moment with Avery Bradley, a good friend, and he lost it and he cried, and Avery's consoling him. I just don't think that's, like, do we need to... De- I'm li- I'm willing to debate anything. Do we need to debate whether or not a guy is ready to play a basketball I mean, game after his but, sister died? Okay, that's fair enough. Fair enough that we could debate anything, but isn't it a fair question to wonder if anyone? Let's not, let's not make it the video of this that's heartbreaking. And everybody wants to side with Isaiah Thomas because we can all see that kind of pain. Right. Make it anyone. You're about to go to work. You're sobbing. Are you ready to work? Yes or no. Are you ready to do your job well? Yes or no? And furthermore, as I said, would any of us have worked that night or the next day? Yes or no? If we suddenly lose a sibling. And furthermore, would our bosses even expect us to work? Right. Well, Brad Stevens gave him the option. Now, probably say, we didn't care. It's up to you. But not everyone has that kind of job. It's a little bit different, right? I mean, understood. But um, I... I thought everything that happened with Barkley, uh, while it wasn't unfair, he is a content machine. Right. I thought what we did to Barkley there is what he's objecting to. Okay. Which is we absolutely turned him into content because it was a way to discuss the Isaiah Thomas story without any of us getting our hands dirty. Don Lebatard, sexy basketball analysis. Stugatz. That is Barkley. I mean, we made Chuck. Round mound of no rings. This is the Dan Levatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. Josh Norman going to join us in about 12 minutes, cornerback for the Washington Redskins. Here's a story according to the Sports Business Journal and the author Michael Smith. Nike executive George Raveling calls something, quote, the worst thing to happen to basketball in the last hundred years. End quote. What would be your guesses on what he's talking about there? Nike executive George Raveling is saying that something or someone is the worst thing to happen to basketball Hmm. in the last century. Something or someone, huh? I mean, I'll take a guess. Three-point line? I don't know. The correct answer is James Dolan. LeVar Ball. Close, Mike. Why? They're worried about bigger baller brand, man. Yeah, Triple B, man. Yeah. Wanting a billion dollar contract coming for you. We'll make our own brand. We don't need you. What, what, why? Why? The worst thing to happen to basketball in a hundred years. I mean, Gilbert Arenas brought a gun into a locker room and had a gunfight with a guy who's presently in jail for having murdered someone else. But that's not the worst. What are some of the other things that we can nominate to make George Raveling feel really bad about what he said? Donald Sterling? Malice at the Palace. <laughs> what are some of the a other million things? What are some much. of the other things that we can nominate worse than LeVar Ball? Hank Gathers died on a basketball court. Jason Williams, the former center of the Nets. Len Bias. Hell yeah. Tabo Cephalosha missed a playoff series because the police broke his leg. Analytics. (laughs) 
That was a long time before Hakeem Mix Nix got in there and laughed. There are two people that the casual sports fan knows from college basketball this year. One of them is Grayson Allen, and the other is this dude's son. And it's this dude's son because of this dude, not because of this dude's son. There's a kid playing in Washington, and I can never remember his name. And he's supposed to be the number one overall <laughs> pick in the draft, and I don't, I can't remember his name. Fultz. There you go. Markel. I don't know. He's don't know. Just Fultz. All right. M. Fultz. <laughs> wow, I might get fined for that, and you guys are just brushing past hey, it because none of you, we don't know what they none of you know his name. <laughs> what they win? But what I'm games? saying, well, but what I'm saying, they won nine games. Washington did. Oh, good. You know a lot about this guy. You know his name. But I'm saying the casual sports fan. It's Markel. Good job, man. Oh, the casual sports fan does not. You're really, going over mock drafts, really? aren't you? Wait a minute. We're going to celebrate that I can name three college basketball players from last year? What is this person doing that is so egregious? that Nike executive George Raveling would call him the worst thing to happen to basketball in 100 years. It's probably just, it's probably has something to do with how he treated the high school coach and something to do with, you know, lever- dad having leverage over schools, teams, coaches, um, dictating where his kids are going to go and what they're going to okay, do. Okay, having the power to himself. I, I mean, basically, his own kids. I mean, well, right. What he says is, you're not going to exploit my kids. I'm going to exploit my kids. And this makes, uh, you know, Nike can do a pretty good job of exploitation, whether it's with uh, Chinese kids in factories uh, or over here with the amount of money that they spill all over the place. Listen, if the Balls successfully leverage their own brand to get a bigger contract or just say, hey, we don't need you, that's a big problem for a company like Nike. A huge one. If they somehow establish some sort of template that other people can follow, I know LeVar Ball is considered you know, a loudmouth joke, but this could actually work Mike. if he's taken high. Well, I'm, first off, there's only a brand if the kid turns out to be good. Not good, great. Okay? And secondly, Correct. I mean, he can't but, do a shoe deal. I mean... No, but let's say he's like, no, I'm not happy with that offer, and I'm just going to bet on myself for a little okay. bit. You know, it could happen. The reaction to him is hyperbolic and weird. Uh, some people write in here, Kermit Washington, breaking Rudy T's face. Somebody has written here, oddly, Marv Albert wearing panties on his head. Now, I think you've got your facts wrong. I think he was wearing the panties in his nether regions. But Marv Albert was back at work last night and has been working for a while. Can you endure that scandal today? I'm guessing that most people don't even know about that scandal. I mean, has Greg Anthony even come back? Like, yeah, he's back he's now, back? too. Yeah, he's back. He's yep. back. A TNT's collecting all of them. Greg Anthony, whose face looks like a face that you draw on a balloon. He's back. So, But that wasn't quite the same scandal. That wasn't picked up by the tabloids. Do you think the majority of our audience knows that Marv Albert had a scandal that involved wearing a woman's panties? Yes! Don Lebertard. Stugatz is kind of morally bankrupt. Stugatz. That's fair. This is the Don Lebertard show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. Josh Norman's one of our favorites. I hug him awkwardly when I see him. He's hosting a celebrity basketball game this Saturday in Charlotte, benefiting his foundation. For more information, you want to go to Stars with a Z twenty four dot org. Stars with a Z twenty four dot org you just mentioned a fine there that marcus smart got which is the fine josh and thank you for making time for us which is the fine that you got that hurt the most um wow that's well it's not really a a hard one i think it was the bow and arrow uh i think that was that was the, the biggest fine i got that hurt most um because I was celebrating. When I was celebrating, I was off of the field of play. And then I shot it up in the air to the fans, and I got a flag for it. And then I got hit 12,000 after that. And I was sitting back here like, out of all the people who shot this bow and arrow, I guess mine was the one that stung the most. 
Okay, and it wasn't, uh, for the record, it wasn't an actual bow and arrow. That was just you doing an imaginary bow and arrow. Can you imagine the fine? If yes, it, was an it would have been a very arrow? big fine, but it was only $1,000? It was only 1000 No, man. No, no. no it was like 10 it was like 10 12 <laughs> what do you mean okay like I, it, was, gay, man. it was just over nine thousand dollars to be exact okay yeah, yeah that one hurts yeah, so. man. well i ran it up because you know the taxes and everything you know how that goes but yeah it was <laughs> it was every bit of that um did you enjoy yourself last year did i oh man <laughs> <laughs> it was it was my most trying funnest however you want to call it year um, and I had to put a smile on and, and just roll with the punches and enjoy every moment of it. And, and I did, man, and because I was myself. I wasn't nobody else but that. Did you enjoy how bad Carolina was without you? <laughs> <laughs> you know what, man? You got to start off mighty early. Y'all start it off. Y'all just think, pop it off. It's, a good, well. qu- it's a good question. You just pop it off, right? It's, it's a good and question. Quit Yo, you know what? I'm going to just start a conversation off with Dan. Go ahead and get all your subliminal <laughs> conversation comments. Just get them out of the way. Well, okay. I didn't even um, ask that, but it's a good question. <laughs> answer okay. answer his question. Who asked that question? Fire him off. Might as well, hell. It's but you, off you right. still haven't answered the one he asked you. What is? <laughs> did yes or no? You enjoyed that Carolina suffered without you? Yes Man, or look, no? I <laughs> do not enjoy anybody's downfall. Let me break that for the record. <laughs> you know, I don't enjoy that. How about Odell's? Maybe Odell's. Maybe Odell's. No. Oh, no. <laughs> Man, you guys are still at it. I see. Still at it. No, we don't enjoy that. Of course, you know, I feel for my ex teammates who are still, they still are my brothers today. I felt for a man, you know, to go through that because I know how it felt before um, being there. And it just, it sucked. It really just sucked. But hey, ain't nothing you can do about it. You're on another team. You're playing hard for that team. And you're trying to win and, and be successful. You know, they just couldn't get it over the hump that year. And it is what it is. Josh, give me the number of yards that Julio Jones had in a single game against a Panthers cornerback who was not you. <laughs> oh, man. So ask Gettleman, he knows. Give me All the right. number. I know you know, too. Give me the number. What was the number? I don't num- know. Josh. I don't know, man. Hey, my memory is like, I have a short memory. As being a DB, you have a short memory. Over or under 250? <laughs> Over or under 250? <laughs> was it under 250? Man, like I said, I don't know, man. I don't know if it was 250 or not, but I didn't put a career game up like that in a while. I'll put it like that. I'm pretty sure you had a career game. Is it true, Josh, is it true that you left your initial meeting before the draft with the New York Giants in tears? Where the heck did that come from? <laughs> where did that come from? It's an ESPN interview that you did, and the quote is, before he was drafted, the Giants front office angered him with probing interview questions about his character, trying to get him to admit that he wouldn't listen to coaching that you were a dirtbag. They kept asking you the same question, <laughs> wanting you to admit to something you didn't oh do. Oh, my God. And the quote is that you ended up breaking down in the room. No? I feel like this. Man, only people who know is about the ones that's getting drafted in those meetings are the people who get drafted in those meetings. And I tell you what, they are intense meetings. Some are BS. Others are cool. And some people just want to see how you get, get you riled up for no reason. I don't know. I don't get it. I, I just feel like that's the type of poor they like to play. But I say this, I wasn't going to that freaking place, <laughs> even if I would have gone back. Okay. So All I right. feel like that. All right. I that, feel like that. That was the most hurtful of them? That was the worst one? Oh, it stung. It stung, it stung pretty bad, man. That's that's the sour taste in my mouth ever since. And I was just like, you know what? Screw it. Hell, I ain't got to be here if I don't want to. So that's kind of how it went down. But it is what it is, man. I think – you know, those those um things like that that happen, they set you up for greater things in the end, and you look at them as a learning tool and be like, okay, well, shoot, you know for next time. Would Josh Norman show up to this White House, this White House, if his team won a Super Bowl? Man, you guys are putting the pressure on it. That's hey, a good I swear, question. I ready for this one. That's a good question. You thought you were walking. Hold on a second. Let me help you out. Hold on. 
I think y'all guys are really, really ready to put this on full court press today, huh? Hold on I'm a second. I'm talking about you to hold two months out, huh? Y'all Hold on a second. It, it is. If you came on more often, we yes. wouldn't do it this yes. way. We could sprinkle them all around over time. Promote y'all the event. Just, yeah, y'all promote. just waiting to get me on this phone. All right. Hold on a second. Hold on. Josh is hosting a celebrity basketball game this Saturday in Charlotte. It benefits his foundation, Stars 24 with a Z. Stars24.org. Now answer his question, Josh. There you go. There you go. Now, now, now we can go ahead and continue and talk. You know what I'm saying? That, that's really the main reason why, you know, here started grilling me. But it's okay. I'll give y'all what y'all <laughs> for me. So go ahead. Yeah, would, would Josh Norman show up to this White hold House? On, hold on a second. Hold, right, on. hold on. Hold on. Stars24 <laughs> with a Z. Stars24.org <laughs> if you want to help Josh Norman's <laughs> charity. Right, there you go. Right. Hey, you better keep plugging it, too. You better keep plugging it. <laughs> all right, all right. Stars with a Z, 24.org. Would Josh Norman show up to this White House, this White House, if his team won a Super Bowl? Ooh, we. Um, are we getting paid? <laughs> no. no. No, you think there's an appearance fee? You think you're, you're going to you're gonna have to take it out of Trump's wallet? What do you mean? If, are you getting paid? Shoot, he got the money. He might as well pay us. Shoot. Golly. All them tax money and benefits and cuts he got, he might as well give somebody something. I don't know. You know what? I don't say this. Uh, I don't know, man. Um, hopefully nothing happened in my family. I have to go and check on a family matter or else I'll be, you know, pulling the same TV card. <laughs> uh, yeah, the top, wow. yeah, the top. Well played, <laughs> yes, man. that's it, the TV card. <laughs> what, the window, what, my what, guy, what? man. I ain't going to come put him out there like that, but he's my guy. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Stars24.org uh, with a Z if you want to help out yeah, Josh Norman. Guy, Who's going to be there? Who's at the celebrity basketball game? Man, we got a little bit of a mix of everybody. Uh, my old teammates, some of my new um, – I think it's gonna be fun. Some of um, the NBA players, and I don't know, man. My, my events is pretty much you come, you show up, you'll see who will be in the stands. I can't really tell you because this is a prize. I usually bring guys from different places, and we all come in and and have a game and benefit the kids. That's what it's all about, man. It's about the stars. The stars are the kids, and we're backed by us, and we try to do everything we can to you know benefit them and have them success rate. So when they get out of school, they can go and do the same thing and. You know, we commit the cycle. What would you say was the hardest thing, Josh, or the biggest difficulty in the transition from last year? Was there anything that you weren't expecting that caught you off guard? Oh, man, it's just, I don't know if I was expecting the amount of hate that's in the NFC. That jump caught me off guard. I didn't, I didn't think it was, like, really that deep. I mean, you got fans who are, like, generational fans, and it stinks, like, they really do hate Dallas Cowboys. They really do hate the Eagles, and they hate New York Giants out of all of the most. Like, it's unreal. If you're not with your team, they hate you. And the crazy thing is it falls off onto the players as well. I don't like nobody that we play in our division. I'm just going to be straight honest. I don't know <laughs> how everybody that way in the NFC East. All right. I mean, the NFC South, but NFC East, I just cannot – them suckers, man. Philly, it was cool. But everybody else, I just hate. I just, I just hate. I'm sorry. I just, I don't know if that's a strong enough word to put out there. I mean, I would be. This is my PG version, you know, rated G kind of ugly in between white lines. You know how that goes. But I really just dislike those guys. Dan, I'm going to need you to promote his event again. Quickly. Okay. Stars24.org. Stars with a Z. 24.org. Go ahead. Ask him a tough one. Better quarterback, Cam or Cousins? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, promote it one more time. Promote it one more time. Stars24.org. Stars with a Z. 24.org. Go there now. Give it to him again, Stugat. Better quarterback, Cam or Cousins? Yeah. You guys are some clowns, man. Oh, my God. You can listen to the Dan Levatar Show with the Stugats 10 to 1 Eastern on ESPN Radio, and you can watch on ESPNU.